<lacht> Trash. Servus, grüezi, everyone. <lacht> Ooh, I am excited for this video. It was just time again, okay? It was time I do something for seven days, aka a week straight. And what better thing to do in July than to do a different color every day? I know I'm a little late maybe, but yay, pride! Before we get into the seven days that I have eaten, we obviously need to set some rules for the seven day challenge. The first rule is whatever I put in my mouth needs to be in the color that the day is in. For example, it's okay if I mix in some other ingredients, if I cook something that are not that color, as long as the end result is that said color. Rule number two is it won't count if the packaging is that color, but not the inside. For example, on the orange day, I can't just eat Reese's just because the packaging is orange, because the Reese's themselves, there are brown. So that won't count. So let's get into the seven days of eating only colors. The very first day of this challenge, I decided to do red. I feel like red is still an okay color. Like you can find a lot of stuff that is red, but we're gonna start very chill, very basic, because we can just eat some strawberries, some raspberries, and just have a cute little fruit breakfast, little fruit basket. I usually am not a breakfast eater in general, or if I do, I eat it at lunchtime and then I just skip lunch. I'm not a breakfast gal, more like a brunch gal. I also bought this juice made from pomegranate seeds and apple. Honestly, I thought this was gonna be bussin, but this was so freaking gross and I did not expect that. What can you do wrong when mixing pomegranate seeds and apple? Like it has to taste good, right? But don't worry, I found someone who happily took the juice in. And I didn't just give Vincent a juice, I also found these hot nuts, <laughs> taki flavor. And I thought this would be a perfect gift for him and we tried them together, but honestly, they weren't my thing. <laughs> but Vincent also didn't like them that much, but I think he still finished them. That's the attitude. Then I remembered that Cinnamood in Berlin, which is a place for cinnamon buns, actually has a cinnamon bun red velvet roll. It looks pink, but I swear it's red, it's red velvet. And I ate this before and it's my favorite thing like ever so I was super happy that I was able to eat it on my red day and that was kind of my appetizer for my lunch. I found something great for lunch which is this mac and cheese macaroni au fromage <laughs> Cheeto flavor. But don't be mistaken it's not the mac and cheese with the hot Cheeto flavor which I tried before. This is just Cheetos. But I have to say it's definitely so much different than the hot Cheeto ones but I'll get to that in a second. I also added a little bit of cheese because I knew the cheese will be right in the end. And then I added my chips. <laughs> it's so funny, for some reason, Germany is not allowed to legally sell Cheetos because of copyright. So <laughs> they just put stickers on it to make it look like chips. But it is definitely Cheetos and I garnished my mac cheese with the Cheetos. And there we have it, that is my food. It is most definitely very red and it was good. Don't get me wrong, like I don't think you could really go wrong with food like this, at least not for me, but it tasted so much worse than the hot Cheeto version because this one literally just tasted like ketchup. I also have this pomegranate iced tea, hoping that this one will be a bit better than my morning juice. And it definitely was. It was a really good iced tea, I have to say. I never tried this one before, at least not this flavor, but I love it when it's not too sweet, but still a good sweetness. I let Marvin try a little bit of my Cheeto mac and cheese and I have to say, I was so happy that somebody was actually excited about food like this because it's not quite Vincent's taste, but Marvin really ate that shit up. Mm -hmm. For dinner, I actually tried to get rid of some leftovers. I still had a lot of red vegetables that needed to go. I cut this red onion because it just makes sense, even though it kind of looks more purple, but it's fine to put other ingredients in there anyway. But I think if we can make it as on theme as possible, it just satisfies my heart. And then I cut the tomatoes and I cut the peppers, basically just everything rayed in one. And then I just let it pan fry a little bit with some water mixed in. And now it's time to cook the pasta. I bought this Kunta Bunte pasta allerlei mix. Unfortunately, there were a lot of not red pasta pieces 
in there, so I had to play Cinderella and actually sort out the not red ones. The good ones in the schlechten ins Kröpfchen. And there we have the red pasta. Next, I put this world's sauciest tomato paste into my vegetable mixture. By the way, this is not just tomato paste. This is actually a three-in-one tomato paste, wine, sofrito, which is carrot celery and onion and that equals so i put a good amount of that in there and a good amount of it on my pants yes. then i thought i wanted to have it a bit more creamy and i actually added this kind of cream cheese i really should not have added this because it actually made my sauce more orange than red and that was kind of triggering but i just didn't know what to do i just added some red beans in hopes that this would make my orange sauce look more red. I added some more tomato sauce. It was just a bit um, sad. But I think I made it look enough red for me to eat it. I garnished it with a sliced tomato <laughs> because I'm the queen of garnishing. And I mean, you cannot go wrong with a dish like this. This is literally what I eat on a daily, maybe a bit more creamy than this version, but it's just solid. It is a solid dish. I can only recommend it. This one piece of pasta there is kind of triggering, I have to say. And then I just kept on adding some sauce on my spoon directly because I'm such a savage. That was my din -dins. And a little bit later at night, I I have to say that I had a little craving, but luckily I bought this fun Jello Jello. In Germany, we call this Götterspeise, which is translated to God's food. Because you can see a goddess eating her midnight snack. <laughs> <laughs> and that was day one. Honestly, a good start, a very easy start. At this point, I still thought that's gonna be a cool week. I got this. So let's get to orange. When I thought of orange and breakfast, my genius brain immediately thought of carrot cake for breakfast. Unfortunately, when this carrot cake arrived, I realized it's more brown than orange. What kind of foolery is this? It's called carrot cake. Where's the carrot? But don't worry, everyone calls me Naomi the super brain for a reason, because I also bought this Spanish orange tea, which is the most bright orange that you could ever imagine. First of all, I made myself this tea for breakfast. And second of all, I also made a super small portion with just the tiniest bit of water. And then I just brushed some of this highly pigmented concentrated orange water onto my carrot cake to make it look a bit more orange. <laughs> Maybe I also added like one or two little drops of orange food coloring to this tea mixture because the tea itself wasn't actually that highly pigmented. <laughs> what works, works. My carrot cake was orange. And you have to admit, it looked really freaking good. It also tastes really freaking good. I don't know, there's just something about eating cake for breakfast that is so incredibly deeply satisfying for me. I wish I could do it every day. What was not so good was this tea, <laughs> but that's also me because I'm more of a very, let's say forest herbs kind of tea drinker. I love my teas to taste like medicine, <laughs> just like gross. <laughs> but as soon as it's a little bit like fruity, I love fruity people. I don't like fruity tea. Anyway, that was my breakfast. And for my dessert, dessert, breakfast dessert dessert. I treated myself with some orange cap because what else can you actually cuddle on an orange day? And I was so happy about that. And now it's time for lunch and it would kind of be a wasted day if I would not eat some pumpkin on the orange day. So I prepared the pumpkin and I just cut it into some pieces. I also prepared a sweet potato because obviously a sweet potato is also orange on the inside. I also peeled and cut a carrot because it's so orange. And then I just let it all cook together in one pot until it was kind of soft. And now I mixed in some of my golden curry. I know it's called golden curry, but look, it's like literally still orange. Like when I mix it in, it looks orange, okay? This is my finished curry. If this isn't an orange curry, I don't know what is. It was good, but I feel like a little bit of rice could have gone well with it, <laughs> you know? But it was still good. It was a good lunch. It was also a big lunch. I was so full after that. And as a drink, I of course had another iced tea. This is actually my favorite iced tea ever, the Fuse tea, or as I like to call it, Futze tea. It's just black tea mixed with some peach and it's just really good. 
And now it's dinner time, baby. And of course, what would the orange day be without some spicy noodles? I took the chance to make my favorite spicy bulldog noodles, the carbonara flavor, because I also knew that this is a perfect color. Ah! <laughs> I just cooked them like normal, added the spicy stuff and the carbonara powder. And then I added my cream cheese again. The infamous cherry pepper cream cheese. I have to admit that the carbonara noodles just by itself is a little too spicy for me. That's why I always have to add some cream cheese and yay, I can add orange cream cheese. Also adding some cheese and now we can get to my sides. I made a cheese. Krakauer. What is that actually called in English? Smoked spicy Polish sausage. Oh yeah, it makes sense that it's Polish because it's Krakau. I just pan fried the sausage on high heat to make it super crispy and brown. Oh, actually, it's not supposed to be brown. <gasps> I also always add a little bit of water at the end, but be careful, this can escalate quickly. Luckily, I also had some of this radish kimchi in my fridge, which has been sitting there for a couple of weeks. That's why it's so bloated and so fermented. It definitely was very fermented, but I like it fermented. Like, I love it when it's very sour. Now I'm gonna plate everything. There's my noodles, my krakawa, some carrots on the side, and very important, the chili pickled garlic. Never had this one before, very excited about it. And here is my orange dish. We're just gonna ignore the brown krakawa because the krakawa itself uncooked is orange. This is gonna be spicy. There's literally only chili on my plate. I love that I already look like I ate spicy noodles. This lipstick ain't it. <laughs> Let me try it with a piece of garlic. I can get it from there. It's so slippery. It's right there. Mm. So it's a little sour, which actually adds something good to this. Oh, it is very fermented. Carrot. Mm. And my best friend, the super orange krakawa. I want to do this thingy where they do this. I mean, it's not like I expected anything else, but this is a really good meal. I love my carbonara noodles. I love my krakawa. I love my kimchi radish. And what would this video be without an orangina? So on brand, and so fitting. Oh, it's basically like Fanta, maybe a little less sweet, a bit more orangey. Makes the noodles even spicier. That is not a good drink for this food. Ooh! Noodles and garlic. As a dessert, I had this Solero exotic ice cream, which honestly fooled me a little bit. It catfished me a little bit because it was actually yellow. But on the packaging, it was clearly orange. So I felt very betrayed. I still ate the ice cream because what can I do? And that wraps up day number two, our orange day. Before we get to the next day, I just wanna mention that there are still some tickets left for my live tour in September. We already have very low tickets in Cologne. I think there's like 10 tickets left or something. In London, we don't have much tickets left. Here is all of the tour dates that I have planned for September and you see where it is, when it is. And tickets for it you can get on Eventum and also in the link in my description, which is the Eventum link, but it's just can click down there just as a little reminder and now let's get into day number three which is gonna be the green day <gasps> I want the only one that I have ever known. and for breakfast I wanted to make a green omelette for that I just put some spinach into my blender and also I just put the egg right in there because the blender didn't want to blend without some liquid in there and honestly I think I put maybe a little bit too much spinach in there but I just really wanted to make sure it is green so here is my omelet it kind of looks a little weird I have to say it also did not smell nice like the spinach smell it really didn't give it was also a thick boy <laughs> that's green as a garnish i used half of an avocado and some arugula because i freaking love arugula and then some avocado and lime style sauce damn this really is green honestly this was so much better than i had expected the spinach was kind of very strong in there i think half of the package would have maybe sufficed this is good. like i really thoroughly enjoyed it and it really made me super full as a drink i bought this aloe vera drink and it has a little bit of aloe vera in it and then i poured it into the glass and i realized it is 
not green, it is the bottle that is green. It tastes so green. Amazing breakfast. For lunch, I decided to make the green goddess salad, which definitely has been going viral on TikTok maybe like a year ago or something. Boy, For that, I just cut up some cabbage, like half a cabbage, which was maybe already a lot. For that, you really need to do a lot of slicing. I sliced some green onion, some cucumber. It is said that you're supposed to use Persian cucumbers because they're not that watery, but I was not able to find those. So I just patted them a little dry well, i don't know and lastly slice up some chives and then you have the base i also put a little bit of arugula in there because i still had it left from breakfast and why not <laughs> you know why not and then it was time to make the green dressing for that i squeezed out a lemon or maybe even two <laughs> Then some olive oil, some rice vinegar, and the biggest garlic clove that you can find. Then some onion, which I chopped up just to put it in the blender. <laughs> and obviously a lot of, a lot of basil and a lot of spinach. That is my second package of spinach of the day. Also put in a good amount of nutritional yeast and some walnuts. And that's basically it. Oh yeah, you can obviously also salt and pepper it. And then blend it up until you have the smooth dressing kind of texture and put all of it into your salad and honestly i think i did a pretty good job this looks pretty legit i did not do a taste test once i never do taste tests because i feel like it spoils the end result for me and then i had this green goddess salad with my tortilla chips avocado guacamole flavor and i think that was a really good match actually like this together tasted so good the green goddess salad so so yummy i did not expect it to be this good like it had a hype for a reason i drank it with some Ahoy is this german Ahoy Brause is German. If you don't know what Ahoy Brause is, it's basically a powder that you mix with water and then you get this bubbly, fun drink. And this one I just bought like this. Like it's basically already a sparkly drink and it's woodruff flavor. If you don't know what woodruff is, it is a sweet scented herb plant bed straw and it actually is a super popular flavor in germany like we have a lot of desserts and drinks with woodruff flavor it doesn't taste minty it tastes i don't know how to describe it but i fucking love the taste of woodruff i'm a little bite meister bitch i loved this lunch so much everything was great about it vincent also really wanted me to mention that he was also obsessed with the green goddess salad because it's rare that he actually likes food that i make so he really wanted me to emphasize that and then as a snack I wanted to have the star fruit, which was honestly a little yellow. Apparently when star fruit ripens, it gets yellow. But it was green when I bought it, okay? <laughs> and I also found this cumelo, which apparently is an Italian melon. Cumelo! Oh. It tastes like a cucumber. Not really the sweet afternoon snack that I wanted. You could have had a matcha. You can make it. This star fruit is definitely ripe. It still tastes like shit. Time for a matcha latte. I've actually been obsessed with matcha latte a couple of weeks ago. Like it was my go-to drink. This obsessive phase is over now, but I was kind of glad that I was able to drink matcha latte on my green day again. So here's how I make my matcha latte. I kind of make like the lazy version of it because I don't want to spend that much time. And I'm also not super good at making matcha. So I just use this electrical mixer hand mixer whatever this is called and that's that's just how i prepare my matcha okay <laughs> okay it didn't turn out to be that strong just added a bit more matcha mm. <laughs> i think it's not enough matcha it tastes just like milk so usually i always make my matcha latte with oat milk but i didn't have barista oat milk to foam it up so i had to use the other milk that i still had from another recipe but apparently a matcha latte with actual latte is super different than with oat milk. It fucked my whole matcha recipe up. Now you guys think I can't make matcha? Just pretend it's good. Nah. Mm. Maybe I can make my cravings for matcha a bit better with these. Oh, they look like me. They're good, very sweet. I could eat all of these right now. 
A couple of hours later, it was time for dinner again. I just made this green basil pesto with my basil leftovers, my spinach leftovers, my avocado leftovers. You're supposed to put some roasted pine nuts in there, but I just couldn't be bothered and I didn't roast them. I just put them in there, but don't tell me. Tell you. Then again, of course, a huge clove of garlic and a lot of Parmesan. I unfortunately didn't have that much olive oil left, so I just had to improvise. <laughs> The blender had to fight a little bit because there was not that much liquid in there and our blender is a diva. Put that to the side. Let's first pan fry my pak choy in some garlic and oil because there's definitely not enough garlic in my pesto yet. Then I just remove it and I add my broccoli because I just have to put some broccoli in there. Look, it's so cute. Yeah. I'm also adding some snow peas and another club of garlic because we love garlic. Also some onion and then I'll just let it roast in there a little bit. And now I found vegetable noodles. I just cooked them and then I also put them into my pan and mix everything together with the pesto. I think I put a little bit too much pesto in there. Like I just keep on forgetting how much flavor is in a single spoon of pesto and I kind of treat it as, as like a sauce. Also garnishing my food with some cucumber because I'm the queen of garnishing as I said. And there there it is, my green dinner. It looks so cool and I'm so excited to try it because I feel like this is gonna be so bomb. And it was not disappointing. This was so good, absolutely amazing. The only thing that I did not like so much was the pak choy because it was kind of not good. It was just not a good pak choy. Mm broccoli. So good in there. Let's wash it down with some Ramune melon flavor. And if you don't know what Ramune is, it is a Japanese sparkly, very sweet drink. <clears throat> I definitely had better Ramones before, but it's, it's fine. It's just sweetness. <laughs> very happy with this day and everything that I ate. It's time for yellow. Yeah. Of course, I have to put on my cheddar shirt because it is just so on theme. I'm gonna try something new for breakfast. I want to make these viral mango pancakes. So I thought, why not Why not make it myself? Because I can't buy them anywhere here in Germany. We're first gonna make the dough, which is basically more like a crepe dough. You put some milk, some eggs and some melted butter and then drop your sieve in there. <laughs> then you're gonna put all of your dry ingredients through a sieve so it doesn't get clumpy. A little bit of starch, a little bit of flour and powdered sugar. Mix it all together and make sure there are no clumps. And I'll also put a little bit of yellow food coloring in there just to give it that yellow. Oof. That's what they all do, by the way. That's just a part of this recipe. And now comes the most horrible part, making the crepes. Somehow I just cannot do it. I didn't want to take out my crepe pan, so I just made it in a normal pan. And it was so hard to do because obviously you need it to be very thin, but also not too thin so they don't rip. Mm. It was just horrible. It was very hard to make and I really failed because it got way too brown. And then I tried to make it a bit thinner. This one definitely ripped. No! The third one was probably the best one, I would say. I think I kind of figured it out by then. It was just also not very pretty. Then we're gonna make the cream filling, which is literally just cream mixed with a little bit of sugar. You have to beat it real good. And then you can already honestly put it to the side and get to your mango. I think my mango was the biggest disappointment because I just did not have a good mango. It was super stringy and just very mushy and didn't have a good shape and structure. And you know, it was at least ripe, but it was just just not a good mango and I've heard you're supposed to use a good mango obviously. Is she okay? So the mango was definitely my biggest flaw. I was barely able to get anything out of it. Mango smoothie. So I tried to put my mango on there and or at least what's left of it and my cream and I tried to put it all together but it was just... I don't know how they do it but mine just did not have any stiffness like it was literally just so soft i couldn't even lift it without it ripping apart <laughs> the brown is shining through it looks so gross and they're literally already falling apart i'm not even sure if i can give you like a cross section of this and cut it open 
I was able to cut it. I just can't lift it. <laughs> Apart from the fact that I almost could not even lift it up with my hands, they were actually not good. I think I put too much cream. It was just way too overpowering and it just all fell apart in my hands. It was just not a pleasant eating experience. I really failed on this one. I like it when there's mango. <laughs> I just spent two hours making them and this is what I got. For lunch, I wanted to make some roasted corn cobs. This was actually such a go-to food of mine like a couple of years ago. I literally made it every week. Rub it in with a lot of butter and a lot of spices, herbs, salt and pepper, Cajun, paprika, Italian herbs, just everything you can find in your household to make it super flavorful. You know, I just know how to make my corn taste good. Then I wrap it in some aluminum foil and I just put it into the oven for almost an hour. Next I'm gonna cut up my yellow zucchini, which I literally was so happy I found because it's not usually at my supermarket, at my grocery stores. I remember needing this for my ratatouille recipe in one video and I could not for the love of god find this. So I was super happy that I could find it now and I just sliced it into some little pieces and also pan fried it with some salt and pepper. I'm also gonna cook some potatoes and my most important ingredient is my sauce hollandaise. If you don't know what sauce hollandaise is, it's a Dutch sauce made from egg yolk, butter, and lemon. It's just very addicting and very, very nice. I also bought some honey pickles, putting my huge blob of hollandaise sauce over my potatoes. And there we have it. This is my lunch. I have to say this was also a very good lunch. <laughs> Anything with sauce hollandaise is good, to be honest, in my opinion. <laughs> the corn on the cob was honestly a little dry. I don't know what happened with my making corn on the cob skills. I made one for Vincent too, and he said it was better back in the days. I think I have been lacking. Maybe I didn't add enough butter, I don't know. I just feel like I really disappointed my family and my cow. As a drink, I'm gonna have some San Pellegrino Limonata, which is lemon flavor for those who don't speak Italian. <laughs> a solid lunch. Before dinner, I was actually craving a little bit of a snack, a little bit of sweetness. And I really wanted to eat my absolute obsession that I have at the moment, the Haribo rainbow gummies. But obviously I was only able to eat the yellow ones, but it was enough, it was okay. And then for dinner, I'm gonna make something that might be very controversial, but I'm gonna make Hawaii toast. Because das ist der Hawaii toast, toast der Weich schmeckt allen gut. I tried to find the most yellow piece of toast that I could find. These are some toasties and I think they're yellow. I bought some canned pineapple. And honestly, if you don't drink the pineapple juice out of the can, who are you? Obviously, I couldn't use ham as a base. So I just had to find a solution and I used this Buko India cream cheese. I couldn't even describe to you what the cream cheese this is, like what kind of... I think as it's called India, there are probably some Indian spices in there. It's yellow. Put the pineapple on top. Honestly, it was very satisfying how well the pineapple fit onto my toasty. And then a lot of gouda on top. I also made two other options with my leftover sauce hollandaise because that could have also been a good combo. And there are my four Hawaii toasties in the oven and I'm gonna just let them sizzle there. Oh, looking at this now, I just really want to eat this again. This looks so good. I grew up with Hawaii toast, okay? This was literally my childhood and I no, it is controversial, especially on pizza. And I don't think this is much different, but I freaking love it. I burned every single part inside of my body with this dish. <laughs> Definitely the ones with the sauce hollandaise were not as good as the ones with the India buko cream cheese. I feel like that was actually a very good substitute to the ham. Obviously it didn't taste like ham, but it just gave you a little something in contrast to the pineapple. It was just very good. Why do we even call it Hawaii pizza? I don't think it's from Hawaii, is it? Hawaiian pizza is a pizza originating in Canada. So the Canadians. The name of this creation is in fact actually not directly inspired by the US state of Hawaii at all. Panopoulos, who invented this, chose the name Hawaiian after the brand of canned pineapple they were using at that time. In Germany, Hawaiian pizza is thought to be a variation of the ham, pineapple, and cheese top toast Hawaii. 
<laughs> originally introduced by Germany's TV cook. Germany invented Toast Hawaii? I'm glad we know all of that now. Oh, I almost forgot the drink of the day. Gerold Steiner Citrus Limo Minze. Gerold Steiner is actually a beer brand here in Germany, but apparently they also make lemonade. And this one is with lemon and mint. What a bomb dinner. Oh, and I also had a little midnight snack again. I just love my midnight snack. Some yellow crackers with some apple strudel jam. And of course, we can't miss the mustard. I just prepared them with those toppings and then also a little bit of cheese on top, a little bit of gouda. I love, love, love mixing salty and sweet. And I especially love the combination of very aged gouda and sweet jam. And the mustard is good anyway. I love mustard. We don't have to talk about that. But damn, this was the perfect midnight snack. I think this is my epitome of a midnight snack. Oh, and I also had a mango lassi. Oh, and comment down below if you are team pineapple on pizza or if you think it is an absolute curse on this world that should not exist. Okay, now we're getting to the blue day. And I have to say now it's starting to get very challenging because not a lot of foods are naturally blue. For breakfast, I actually ordered a smoothie bowl, which I usually don't eat for breakfast, but this one obviously made sense because it was blue. I think there was some spirulina in there, which is a blue algae. I don't think I ever tried it. Um, this is my first time trying it in a smoothie bowl. I'm not the biggest fan of smoothie bowls but honestly this was not bad like i think i really enjoyed it actually as a drink i had this blue break juice which was obviously also made with spirulina but also guave apple coconut water and vitamins yes vitamins were definitely an ingredient you just take the vitamins and throw them in there. Oh, and then actually some stuff for my cat's came. So he's a little cat hole. Nobody asked for that, but here it is. Dental. Yeah, your breath stinks. Jelly. 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 That could do you love this? More jelly. Boo, the eyes. Gastrointestinal pasta. Taco loves this. Ah. Wow, nice. Love it. Taco loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I also got the cutest new bowls. Can you give me all of your stuff? It's still in your little bag there. So now it's time for my very nutritional lunch. I just had dance coaching, so of course I would need something to really strengthen my body and my bones. So I could only make Taki mozzarella sticks. I also wasn't like super hungry, so I thought the mozzarella sticks were actually a good solution because they're not that much. So I'm just gonna prepare my mozzarella stick coating station. I have these cheese sticks that I'm just gonna roll in both of it. I realized that my Takis are definitely not smashed enough. So I also put it into a blender, like a coffee grinder, and that one really made my Takis super fine, super perfect for this. And then I'm gonna carry on just dipping the sticks in everything. The egg, the flour, then the egg again, the flour again, then the Takis, then the egg again, then the Takis. Just really wanted to make it coated. Here are my four mozzarella sticks. The first two were super coated and then I didn't have that much egg anymore so the other ones were a little thin. But I'm just gonna put them into the air fryer because I ain't gonna fry today, honey. And here are my mozzarella sticks. Oh my god, they look so good. They were so stringy, so cheesy. I just really have to point out something when it actually turns out good because it's not that often when I cook, if you can call that cooking. Springs are... Ah! As a drink, I'm gonna have Powerade, obviously. I feel like that was all of our childhoods. I feel like that's a collective childhood memory that we all have of a Powerade. I only got this when I was a good girl. Then that was my reward. And I wonder if it still tastes exactly like it did when I was a child. Oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, what did you expect? Does it taste like your childhood? I don't know. It used to be tastier. Yeah. I always thought as a child that was like an energy drink. So I felt so adult when I drank it. Lecker! Then for tea time, I'm actually gonna have tea. I found these Kornblumenblütenblätter. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, I actually wanted to make butterfly pea tea, which is actually a very blue 
tea originating from Southeast Asia. I ordered it too late, it didn't arrive on time. But what did arrive on time was this German version of it. <laughs> I had no idea what this is. I just saw that it's blue and I thought that's my butterfly PT substitute. Just, it wasn't really blue. Here, I made you some tea. It's not poison! It's water. Well then, stay hydrated. <laughs> you! I guess we can consider this water. Oh. Oh, it's not that bad. I mean, it doesn't taste like much. <laughs> yeah. Look at my blue tea. <laughs> For dinner, I might be cheating a little bit, but also not. No, I'm actually not cheating. I'm just making it kind of easy for myself. A huge garlic clove again. I'm just very blown away by how huge these are. We're gonna pan fry some onions and the huge garlic clove, and then a whole package of cream in there. This is what I love, this is what I live for. Let's salt it, let's pepper it. Let's also add a little bit of nutmeg. Do you know what I'm gonna be making? You probably know what I'm gonna be making. A whole lot of Parmesan and then we're gonna cook our spaghetti. And once it's cooked, we're gonna add it to our cream sauce. And we're also gonna add some Italian herbs <laughs> and a whole lot of cheese. I am making my own version of pasta Alfredo or actually it is kind of Veronica when recipe and now we're just gonna add some blue food coloring and make this the bluest pasta that you have ever seen this is wrong this is what it looks like it kind of looks like my taki noodles that i once made i know it doesn't look good but i just know that it's good <laughs> i just love creamy noodles creamy pasta everything oh Mm, gone. This really should not exist like this, like this blue pasta situation. It just is wrong, I know. But it's so wrong that it's right. I'm just a creamy bitch. My drink of the night was again Ramone, but this time blueberry flavor. And I have to say this one was actually really nice. Obviously all of these flavors taste super artificial and sweet. I just think Ramone is such a good drink to drink with something salty. If you have a very rich umami salty food and then you have this sweet ramune on the side, it's just the perfect match. Usually I actually just drink ramune together with ramen because ramen is so rich and salty, but this was really good together. I would eat it again, maybe without the food coloring. Of course, we're gonna have a late night snack and I bought these Dr. Sour gummies in blue. They were actually really good. I think I'm in my gummy era. I used to not like gummies, Haribo, all of that. Ooh, didn't care for it. But I think I'm actually at this point where I like it. I also bought this sour rope from the same brand. An interesting consistency, very hard to chew. But I grew to like it. It's nice. Like when you got used to the hardness of it, it was very fun to chew. Both is really good. But this one I like better. Goodbye. Day blue officially done. Time for purple. I just gathered all the purple fruits that I was able to find. Blackberries, blueberries. One could fight over the fact that blueberries are purple or blue. Purple grapes, some plums, and also some dates. Also adding some oat milk, and then we're gonna blend all of it out. Honestly, it started off very purple, and then it got a little bit too red for my taste. I also added a lot of syrup de gave. Don't be confused by the dick in there. And this is my smoothie. It, it looks a little too red. It's annoying because this could have been more purple. I think I added too many plums and the plums were a little too red. It was very sweet. I added a little bit too much syrup, but it was a solid good smoothie. That was my breakfast and then a couple of hours later I just didn't have time for lunch because it was editing day and I just ordered a quick little taro boba. If you don't know what taro is, it is actually a root vegetable that is often used for desserts. Actually, I found out that it isn't even purple, so I think this purple is probably just an artificial color, but I don't know for sure. If you know something about it, let me know. But I ordered my taro boba and honestly, it wasn't the best boba that I've ever tried. It was actually not really good. Then as a snack, I had these Kalamata olives. Definitely purple, in my opinion. I think these are the best olives out there. I know that as I love olives, I probably need to find a boyfriend that hates olives because otherwise it's not gonna work out. I remember my ex also loving olives, so we all know why this didn't work. After I finished my olives, it is actually time for dinner and I have something super special planned for dinner. I found this purple 
artichoke and I am so happy that I found it because usually artichokes are also green but apparently they're also purple artichokes and it was not easy to get my hands on those. First off you're gonna cut off the top part of the artichoke which was a bit harder than I expected. My knife didn't do shit for some reason. The leaves were just so freaking hard. I don't know if it's just because it's a purple artichoke or if that's with all artichokes. I then used some scissors to cut it off because the knife just would not work for the love of God. Then you're gonna rip off all the leaves down there or actually all leaves that don't look good that you want gone. You're also gonna cut off the spiky part of the leaves and then you want to rip off the stem. I was not strong enough for that so I just cut it off and then I also trimmed a little bit of the bottom part of the artichoke together with the stem. And then quickly you actually have to put some lemon juice onto the artichoke like onto the part which you just cut open because otherwise it will turn brown quickly and we don't want that. I prepared two artichokes by the way and I put them into the boiling water and dipped them into the water a little bit and also squeezed the rest of my lemon in there and threw the lemon in there. Put a lid on and then you're gonna let them simmer in there for about half an hour to 40 minutes. It actually took a long time for me. The way you can check if it's done is you actually just rip off a leaf and if it comes off easily then it's done. Like if you don't have to pull it out with a lot of force. After I think 50 minutes I got mine out and just let them cool down a little bit. And then I garnished them with a little bit of olive oil. I opened them up a little bit, put some salt in there and that is the artichokes. Don't they just look beautiful? While the artichokes are still cooling down I'm gonna take take care of the dip because an artichoke is nothing without its dip. Obviously this dip also needs to be purple but I decided to go with a hummus. Here's a little clip of Vincent smelling the blender. Honestly, I kind of just eyeballed my hummus recipe. I put in a whole can of chickpeas and some tahine, which is sesame paste. Of course, again, a huge clove of garlic. A little bit of water, a little bit of olive oil, and that is basically your basic hummus recipe. Oh, I almost forgot to add the cumin. Don't forget to add the cumin. Now it's time for red cabbage. Traditional German food. Well, if it's canned. You usually eat it with some kind of meat and potatoes. It's just a side, but I'm gonna add it in there in hopes it would make my hummus purple. And you know what? It did. My blender was fighting a lot, I have to say, but I think this actually turned out pretty decently purple. I garnished it a little bit with some more red cabbage. <laughs> and now we can finally eat the artichoke. If you don't know how to eat an artichoke, this is how you pull out the leaves and then scrape off the meat from the leaf. That's what you do with all the leaves of the artichoke. And I think it is so fun. I love doing this. It tastes so good. I have to say this hummus, it was actually a really good dip. I did not think it would turn out that well. It matched perfectly with the artichoke. Mm. And this is the heart of the artichoke. But you need to remove this because this is not edible. You can usually just get this top part off like this. And that reveals the heart, which is the best part. Awesome size. Well, I tried my best to just get it off. Oh, my purple lipstick is gone, but it didn't work. So we're just gonna eat it like this. I like the leaves better. The leftovers, more trash than food, but it's fun to eat, it tastes good, and it's fun to eat. As a celebration of the day purple, we have purple Fanta, who is hopefully actually purple. <gasps> wow, it is so purple, it's pur more purple than my wildest dreams. It just looks black on camera, but it's so purple, wait, it's so purple. Purple! <laughs> it's so sweet and so artificial, but it's purple! It looks magic. It does, but it doesn't taste magic. And now it's time for taro mochi. I hope these are good. I never had these before. That is the mochi. Are you serious? Mmm. <laughs> has a little bit of a filling. Don't know what the filling is actually. It looks purple on the packaging. There's like five in there. I also have a Laffy Taffy. Go oh, check the Laffy Taffy. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Arr. laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it's giving mawam, but it's also giving disgusting. This is me with candy, and this is me when it's grape candy. <laughs> Who thought of this artificial grape flavor? It's just not giving nobody anything. It's just gross. Period, chili. That was purple day, and I purple that day. But now. Let's get to the final day and the most important day. If you don't know, my favorite color is pink. So what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of pink food? Okay, interesting. It was breakfast time and I actually managed to get my hands on a pink dragon fruit. It's not that easy to get in Germany. You can't just buy it at a grocery store. You can only buy the white ones that are white from the inside and i always thought the pink ones is where it's at so i was so happy to finally be able to try this i've never tried it before and it was um meh <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't give up. I wanted to make this my breakfast. So I bought some strawberry raspberry yogurt and I just mixed my dragon fruit into this yogurt. And this is my breakfast. It also made it very pink, which made my heart very happy. And I don't know how to describe the taste of this. I mean, I do know it. It's kind of odd, but it kind of tastes like my mom. It tastes like my mom smells. It actually tastes a little bit like her perfume smells. And it's such a weird connection. So I don't think it tastes good. I mean, love my mom, but yeah, I just, I, just um, um, I don't want to eat, eat her. And now it is time for the lunch. I don't know why I make it so dramatic. It's time for beetroot. I actually bought this beetroot one week prior on red day because I actually thought I was going to use it for the red day. But then I realized beetroot is actually more pink. And I made the mistake that I bought a fresh not prepared not cooked beetroot so i had to cook it for like an hour before i was able to even use it i guess that is the first time for everything and now i can say i cooked a beetroot and now i can finally do something with this beetroot one week later i peeled off the peel and cut it into little pieces do you know what i'm gonna make maybe you'll get there i'll just keep on chopping i'm gonna peel an apple and also cut the apple in small pieces another red onion in this case it is a pink onion this pink onion really made me cry my heart out it was very dramatic oh my god Then some pickles. Also cut these into little pieces. We're doing a lot of chopping again. No, we're getting to the herring. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of this type of fish. It kind of grosses me out a little bit, but I really wanted to make a herring salad. I still remember my mom's ex always bringing a huge bowl of herring salad every Christmas. Somehow I really thought it was interesting because it was so pink. And I think now it is the time to try it and to make it. I feel like it's also very German. German herring salad, this pink version of it, it is so German. So I'm gonna cut the herring also in little pieces. I also washed it before that because I've heard that if you wash it before, it will get less fishy in the end. And now we're gonna make the dressing. Buckle up. The dressing consists of sour cream. Wait, no, it's actually not sour cream. It is like cream, like it is as liquid as cream, but it's a little sour. But it's not sour cream. It is Zaurasana, which is translated sour cream, but it's not the same. This is so confusing. You put this whole thing in, then some creme fraiche, which is honestly sour cream, I think. Actually, you were supposed to put schmand in there, which is kind of like sour cream, but I think schmand is less fat in there, but I couldn't find schmand, so I used sour cream, but actually creme fraiche, I think it is the same as sour cream. <laughs> then like three or four tablespoons of pickle juice, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard and some olive oil, and you mix it all together, then salt, pepper and sugar it. Add it to all the other chopped up ingredients and mix it really well. And there you see the magic happen, it turns pink. Now I did something super smart because it would be kind of perverted almost to just eat the salad on its own. But I just cooked some potatoes. I know there are some pink potatoes out there. I just couldn't get my hands on them. And obviously these are not pink, but I just chopped them up into smaller pieces and then added them to the salad and just mixed them in there. And then it was all one pink big mess. <laughs> it looks pretty cool. It is a beautiful color. We're gonna try this and 
I was skeptical. I really had to get into it and really think a lot, but I came to the conclusion that it is not bad. I have to say I'm not the biggest fan of herring. Still, I think it is a bit too fishy, especially because this is raw fish and it is just very strong in taste and very flavorful. Whenever I didn't have too much herring on my spoon, it was actually really good. I also, by the way, let the salad soak for like four to five hours you can even let it soak overnight so it gets even more fragrant and flavorful oh and as a drink i had this calypso triple melon lemonade it looks very satisfying and very promising but i somehow had the same experience like with the first juice that i tried this was kind of gross <laughs> As a little afternoon snack, I had the pink snowballs, which are very popular 7-Eleven food in America, like just gas station food, I think. It was okay. Like first bite was not the best. It was a bit dry. When you get to the cream in the middle, it's actually kind of okay. It was edible. I just wouldn't buy it again. I also found the snowfall milk and juice in my Asian supermarket. It's a drink with milk and juice and i'm obviously gonna drink the pink part out of it and uh, it was a little bit messy but not bad i don't even know what the flavor was it kind of tastes like strawberry but also a little bit like lychee i kind of like it i think this would have been really good if i had cooled it before like if i had put it into the fridge this was not bad i like really sucked it up like a baby go, 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 go. and now it's time for dinner i'm currently at a restaurant and there's a reason why i think they have something pink they also have pink menus which is already a good start and a pink bag. this is what i'm here for the pink lamb it's uh dumplings i hope they're pink it's a wild berry lily cheers Hi. Oh, it's good. It's refreshing. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, guys, Vincent, uh, Mar Sorry. <laughs> it's the hair. Look, they have the same hair. They have the same hair. <laughs> Marvin ordered a strawberry sorbet. It doesn't look that pink, but I swear it's pink. It's just not pink it next pink. to me. It is pink. I can confirm. And I just ripped it out of his hands. I'm going to try the dessert before he tries his. My dumplings are still not there. I take 10% so. of the AdSense. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot I know. for one dessert. <laughs> Yummy! Yeah. It just tastes like strawberry ice cream. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. No complaints. Oh, I don't really love lamb, but let's hope for the best. Aggressive. <laughs> It's cool. Mm -hmm. oh. Just as I thought, I don't really like lamb. But it's not bad because it's like this minced lamb with some onions and stuff, so it's not like pure lamb. <laughs> it's time to finish off this very colorful week. And what better thing to finish it off with a midnight snack and with black pink Oreos. I know it's not completely pink, but I just had to grab these when I saw them. I couldn't even order them anywhere before because I tried, believe me, I tried. It's not like I tried every single Oreo flavor in this world, but I was so happy I found these and it counts as pink. I think this is just the perfect ending of this video and it was very, very fun to film. Very challenging here and there and I feel like I literally didn't do anything else in this week other than eat. But it was great. It was super interesting to just branch out a little bit because I normally definitely would have never made an artichoke or this herring salad or red cabbage hummus. And this is the end of this video. Hallelujah. But if I might share a little TMI with you, I think I had green poop for three days. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social media, which is Naomi John on Instagram, Naomi John on TikTok, and Naomi John on Spotify. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Woo! Oh, I still have the playing here. <laughs> Bye, baby. <laughs> Goodbye.